Riddle number two. If you are justice, please do not lie. What is the price for your blind eye? Bribes. Oh, God, bribes! He's asking how much it costs for you to turn your back. Be good, be good. 58 seconds! How much? Nothing! How much? 10 grand! 10 G's a month, I get a monthly payment just not to prosecute certain cases. What cases? You didn't ask me that, come on! It's 10 grand! <laughs> okay, 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 Don't lose your head, Mr. Colson. Just one more to go before your time runs out. Hi, this is Michael Uslin. You're listening to Batman on Film. I'm vengeance. I have given a name to my pain. The Batman. Always waiting for some Batman to save you. It's simple. We are uh, kill the Bat of Gotham. Welcome to the Batman on Film Social Hour podcast. I am senior BOF contributor Ryan Lauer, sitting in for Bill Jet Ramey. This is show number 80, and Bill has a rhythm with each episode number, so I want to keep that going. And he would love the fact that I could say number 80 uh, was Chris Carter's number in the 80s for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, Bill really wants some representation of the Eagles on his show. So here you go. Number 80, the Chris Carter episode. Well, Bill's not here, but I'm not alone. Because joining me is another senior BOF contributor who's also a Ryan. It's the sheriff, Ryan Haas. Ryan Haas, hello. Hello. I'm here. You're here. I'm happy that you're here. You know, I'm not good with the... Did you make like a sports reference to 80 or something? Was that... What was that? I did. Yes. Oh, I zoned out. And then I was like, was that sports? (laughs) sports zoned out <laughs> so i was trying to think kind of not your your jam <laughs> for the speaking of jams i was trying to think of i'm like do i have a 1980s or a number 80 reference to also throw in and i had to look it up to make sure but june, june 25th 1980 was uh the first was when the first album studio album by huey lewis and the news was released entitled wow. huey lewis and huey the lewis news their news. first album yes so there there you go there's a there's was a that a was that a point. fact that you learned from patrick bateman and american psycho <laughs> that or dick shoes <laughs> yeah and my uh, dog patrick loves ben. that reference oh good i heard that's awesome well happy to have you aboard this is the first time that you're on for a chapter by chapter uh, this is this is I number know. seven of the chapter by chapter series, and this one is titled "Don't Lose Your Head, Mister Colson." Six would have been good if you would have been on that one. For, it would have been good by default for Alexander Knox, but that's okay. Uh, seven seven is just as good because we have a good chapter here, Mister Haas. So, are you it ready is. to talk? Yes, the Batman. Yes, I am ready to talk about Batman content and not. Lots of news that I DC don't drama? care about or yeah. won't matter next week. So, yes, I'm very ready. Okay. Well, let's dive into the Batman Chapter 7. Now, you know that we last left off with uh, Bruce talking to Carmine Falcone outside of the, the. Uh, I mean, I don't know what's the building called. I mean, it's not City Hall, is it? Or is it Gotham City Hall? Uh, but anyways... This chapter starts off of us entering the funeral for the mayor. Bruce comes in, he's scanning the place. Uh, He sees that one guy, he's slightly paranoid because he's just waiting for the Riddler to show up. One guy tries getting past the guards. Another man starts talking to him. And uh, this man is credited as, I think, a bitter nobody. Douglas Russell is the actor's name. A bitter nobody. And he says to bruce well the loudspeaker at this point mentions that mentions the gotham renewal fund and how it's our city's safety net yeah the bitter nobody says what good's a safety net that doesn't catch anybody 
didn't help my daughter when she needed it. I can tell you that guy was just another rich scum sucker. Got what he deserved. Know what I mean? And he turns and he looks at Bruce and he says, Hey, don't I know you? Now there's a lot of speculation online. As soon as we saw the, as soon as the first viewings went out and people were starting to talk about the Batman back at the, you know, end of February, beginning of March, I guess it would have been March 1st was the early fan screenings that this guy is the one who says, I'm vengeance at the end that Batman pummels his face. Brian Haas, you and I, we watched this movie twice together. Did yes. you ever subscribe to that theory? I, I, it was not a light bulb that went off. And I still don't know if that is the guy. And, but they sure do linger on both of those, top, you know, at the end and here in this scene, they linger on that person's face for quite a while. Like the movie wants you to remember who this person is. So it's hard to tell. I have a theory. But the movie doesn't make it ex- very explicit. It doesn't. But I, the, the point of the guy at the end, I don't think is to try and make connections that we saw him. Granted, I was trying to figure out if that was somebody that we'd seen earlier in uh, yes. in the film. But like I said, this guy, he's credited as a bitter nobody. And it's Douglas actor Douglas Russell, a guy in the end of the movie. His, his name is Bronson Webb, and he's credited as hooded gunman. Well, I think mm-hmm. all the gunmen at the end are the hooded gunmen. So I just don't feel like that's. And then if you look at it, this Bronson Webb guy at the end, the hooded gunman, like he even face not pummeled. It's like, oh, that matches up a lot better than this first guy. But a fun little fact about this Bronson Webb guy. He um, was also a character in The Dark Knight. He was the a bounty hunter. In this, in this scene. Yes. No, no, no. Right. The, the, the person one at, at the end, end. which, which we'll <laughs> okay. bring. We'll, we'll revisit that, you know, in uh, what? Let's nine chapters and nine weeks. <laughs> yeah. But he was also in the dark night in the gamble scene while he's shooting pool. He's one of the Joker's henchmen. So oh, there you go. interesting. It's all connected. All connected. It's so all connected. speaking of, it is all connected. I mean, the, the, the connection that you can make now that we know question mark, right? Like that, that's not yeah. the same person, but there is narrative connective tissue there. And this scene, uh, Bruce's interaction with that person is kind of a really good indicator early indicator of you know you he goes in as bruce goes into the funeral you've got this big mob of people that are siding with the riddler and Mm -hmm. this interaction one-on-one interaction with this guy and bruce is showing you where this could go and what kind of effect the 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 marred use of the gotham renewal fund that we still don't know has really happened yet in the movie but that the kind of social impact that it has had on people Mm -hmm. and we see that those people are naturally kind of drawn to the Riddler at this point in terms of being somebody that even though he's, his methods are very much against the law and he's killing people that some people are so desperate that they're taking up with, with that side. And the fact that it does come manifest at the end of the movie into people that will take up the, the Riddler's cause and, you know, visual appearance, yeah. Um, you know, so it, it, it is it, it is connected in that way for sure. Yeah. I mean, we see this is it of. This guy is later in the movie when we see his posting online and all the people commenting, it's like it's a bunch of these guys. Like mm-hmm. this is mm-hmm. this is his front, like his uh, his army he's trying to build, I guess mm-hmm. you could say, you know, and all that and warp to mine. Um, as we saw a ton of times in. Uh, in the trailers. Bella Royale, Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we saw snippets of this conversation in the trailers. And mm-hmm. um, actually, actually, at this point, when the uh, when the bitter nobody starts talking to Bruce, uh, the, the choir up in the front starts singing Ave Maria. So, yes, that yeah, you don't necessarily know is that first time watching. But yeah, it's so like well, the thing that's helped doing these chapter by chapters is I would definitely recommend when you're watching it in these bite-sized chunks to turn on the subtitles because it does point mm-hmm. things out. You didn't know mm, this whole scene is kind of a good, it's like the, the scene in a little bit of the scene before this on the last chapter by chapter is a good, it's like the first time in the movie where you really do see Bruce Wayne operating in public as Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. And we know that he's really only kind of doing this to further Batman's interests, but the, but the, the other reason he doesn't, Bruce doesn't want to be out in public is because he wants to avoid all these public interactions. And Mm -hmm. you can, through the previous scene in this one, you can see why, look how much 
he's had to go through during this these couple of scenes with t- interacting yeah. with Falcone and Bella Real and this you know he, this it's funny here because the, yeah it, you say that of him like avoiding like out in public and stuff but yet this this entire scene so she says that Bruce Wayne and he like this is right after the guy looks he's like hey don't I know you mm-hmm. uh and Bruce Wayne he he turns around and looks quick and she's like I'm uh why haven't you been trying to back? call your Bruce aunt says I'm sorry that's his only dialogue <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, Bruce Wayne's only dialogue in this whole scene what? and she says you know I'm Bella Real I'm running for mayor and um it's a cool like as they're walking away like that I just love the credit of bitter nobody it's yeah, like I mean, it's, 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 it's stung it's him looking yeah like he he realized oh this guy that I was trying to identify with as like a mutual like mm-hmm. he's one of my mutuals like yeah he watch it and but he's trying to talk to Bruce about how bad the 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 rich scumbags are and he thought he was identifying with somebody but he wa- has but he watches the uh, Bruce Wayne and the person running for mayor at the mayor's funeral kind of drift away from him he's like look at these and you could just see the look on his face like look at these rich mfers just walking mm-hmm. away like this st- doesn't matter or whatever and and yeah i mean it took this scene and and listening to the subtitles to really hear the the um there's so much going on in this scene. It, it's so great to analyze these on a scene by scene basis because the score, the cinematography, mm-hmm. the dialogue, a lot that you get from just the shots say a lot. Right, even as Bruce is walking in, he Bruce is looking around uh, the interior at the the police overhead, and he's yeah. thinking like, "Oh, he's already kind of looking like." maybe Riddler is here. Maybe Riddler is trying to oversee this thing. And yeah. you can hear even right before the, the radio voice comes on to talk about the Gotham renewal fund and <laughs> you should make a donation to the renewal fund. Yeah. Um, there is like a heavy, like breathing. There's like a Riddler mask type sound that happens. And it's even listed in the subtitles, huh. like heavy breathing. So I didn't, listen, I didn't listen hear to that. the very beginning of this scene. It's okay. like, it sounds sure. like Riddler's mask breathing, at, at, and it happens was just it, as it Bruce. Bane? I know, right? Welcome <laughs> to Riddler. But yeah. yeah, you hear it just as as Bruce is looking uh, up above where the Riddler doesn't eventually show up um, mm-hmm. in the scene. So I don't know if that was a subliminal insert from the audio. I gotta listen to it now. It's some headphones what? in just to just try yeah. headphones and subtitles. Headphones and subtitles. It points it out, and once you hear it, you 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 won't unhear it, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So she continues, in which this part, like, it's funny because we heard this uh, section also in the trailer, um, intercut of Inyo, you know, and she says, "I'm I'm running for mayor." Uh, about basically, your family's always been involved in philanthropy. Um, and it's funny even in watching it now because I watched the trailer so much that last trailer that they released where I didn't it was between that tra- I between didn't each line was a cut like to the Batmobile scene <laughs> and like a ramping up and then back to her of like your family uh-huh. blah, 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 you know and stuff like that oh and yeah then, I watched it exactly one time but I didn't watch it enough to and, have it cement in my brain is what happened. and you don't do and you don't do much or something like that and then it cuts in the trailer he's like hmm. You know that sort of yeah, deal, yeah, which yeah. is funny. So it's like still so even now like, as far as I can it, see, you're not doing anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so even now, like I'm watching it, it's like I'm almost like waiting for that cut uh, yeah. to happen. But yeah, um, I don't know. Did you watch this when they released this scene before no, the movie? I did not okay. watch the scene, and I and it was that I did. weird, it was <laughs> I that weird it. time where it was like, is this a real <laughs> scene or is this embargo? Blah blah blah. And I was like, no, I don't want to. I was watching the trailers, but I did not mm-hmm. watch the scene. I was like, I don't. I'm going to watch the movie. I don't care. I don't want to see anything. Yeah. I couldn't, con- I couldn't control myself. Yeah. Uh, but it. so a lot of us, we saw a chunk of this scene, but mm-hmm. uh, I mean, as it edged along, we see like Bella, she sees the fam, like the son that Bruce has made eye contact with and, and the, uh, the mother slash wife of the mayors. And so she says she needs to go talk to him, but she wants to continue the conversation with him. Mm-hmm. And then he makes eye contact with the boy, uh, which is also interesting in a, a connection to, you know, the the beginning of the movie as Batman right. making that and same kind of eye contact. So same, this is like, the second looking over the shoulder. A, yeah, this is the second major interaction between Bruce Batman and the mayor's kid. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, I don't know. And maybe, you know, way down the line, seven chapters down the line or something. We can talk about 
it, but it's it's I'm curious in listening to the commentary. I don't know if Reeves really expanded upon like want this looking at the kid other than like I don't know if he talks about it in the commentary, but he has mentioned it in one of the many podcasts he's talked to people about the movie on. I know he's brought it up before. The first time as Batman, I mean, the reminder there was like, was so that we don't have to um, go through another Wayne murder scene. And it's like, it's a way to tell us. And we know what Batman's thinking and Mm -hmm. reminding of an Alfred when he sees, plays back the contact video and all that. But this scene and doing it too, it's kind of a little like, Hmm. Um, but then we hear him over the Gordon or over the Gordon over his shoulder. We hear uh, Bruce over here, Gordon and the chief Bach talking about Colson missing, uh, which mm-hmm. I mean, that reminds you of 89, right? Oh yeah. And I, th- from the first viewing <laughs> that, that reminded me of 89 and uh, no Gordon talking access to the... chemicals. Yes. Who's, in, who's in charge here? Who's in charge. Eckhart. Oh my God. Oh my God. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, 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 it, it's, What's cool about that moment is that the scene does such a good job of kind of lulling you into Bruce Wayne's world as a public figure. And then yeah, when Gordon's dialogue comes in, it comes from off camera, like or off focus. It's not focused on Gordon. So you just hear Gordon mm-hmm. talking and then you hear and then you see Bruce kind of slowly turn around Mm -hmm. and and i'm like oh this is a conversation we shouldn't be hearing but i should be because that's gordon and yeah um and i almost kind of watched bruce at that moment and wonder like how is this how he's perceiving it he's like oh i'm batman bruce is or i'm batman but they nobody knows it but gordon's talking do you think it takes this bruce a second to remember that oh yeah i'm not batman right now but i need but i want to hear this. when when he's noticed and i know bill's probably uh bummed he's not here because he, it's, cause it's his, his boy, favorite officer it's his martinez favorite meme. <laughs> it's his favorite meme. The, the big yeah. smile on the wave mr wade yeah but what's funny too because i think bill and i talked about it way back in one of the early chapters of the dynamic here and i think uh reeves brought it up in the commentary of so as batman in that early scene gordon's cool with him Martinez is like freak. Yeah. Bruce Wayne, it's the complete opposite. Gordon's almost like I know. It, like almost like a look at him of almost like eh. and Martinez is the one that's all like, you know, impressed and stuff. Yeah. And I really like And that, even for um, spoilers for the next let, scene, just to make sure that that is brought up in the next scene, it's Mark as Bruce opens his as Batman op- opens his eyes, it's Martinez that's saying, "I want to I want to take the mask off. I want to see what he looks like." Mm-hmm. Mm. Thanks to the subtitles. So again, <laughs> I want to say, um, so yeah, we, he, he notices that. And then, yeah, like you, like you kind of alluded to, he should be like, Oh wait, I, like, I'm not Batman. I shouldn't be caught that I'm, that I'm listening in. Um, yeah. Then Bruce we hear the, in the blanks because Bruce knows, mm-hmm. I mean, Bruce was just holding that operation with Selena just the night prior mm-hmm. to track down. And he, and he wanted her to talk to Colson. So he was like, he doesn't, he's trying to fill in those blanks, right? He's like, he knows Selena interacted with Coulson, but then she got frustrated and then ripped all the equipment off. So he doesn't really mm-hmm. know what happened after that. And so he's like, well, shit, like I, what happened? You know, I was, I almost had it, <laughs> you know? So it's trying to figure out like, um, so then his brain is probably racing, you know, and everything comes to a, a, a head very quickly. After. Kind of like how there isn't, because it keeps it all, I mean, it just keeps the story moving along that there isn't a ton of time of, you know, like, hey, Colson's missing. And then that's like a, you know, that's a, yeah. hanging over the story for another 30 minutes or something. It's mm-hmm. like two scenes after he goes missing, yeah. comes crashing in, in which I, I really love yeah. the where we aren't in our kind of like Dark Knight Rises the commotion where, you know, outside. Yeah ramping up and people yelling and screaming it's getting louder yeah, yeah, yeah. i like the fact that we're in with everybody else not yeah. knowing what's going on it's a, like that- a little subplot almost just like in mechanically similar to the dark knight rises when when the i forget what was he a he wasn't a da with councilman or somebody disappears but really he's just palling around with selena and she she's just trying mm. to get information from him 
Hmm. Uh, but then it only takes a couple scenes for you to figure out. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, this guy's missing. <laughs> yeah, we don't need that lingering, and so we get it yeah. like a resolution to it. But it's like in a, it's important too to keep the story developing. And so, right. I mean, as we saw in trailers a lot and stuff too, like the SUV comes crashing in. It's um, close, and Bruce jumps and saves. He saves the kid, but I don't know if the kid would have been hit anyways. But you, I mean, the, that's I think irrelevant. the kid would have. I mean, that, everybody the fact that Bruce that Bruce ran to the kid to try and, you know, make sure the kid was out of the way. It all happens very fast. It almost looks like, cause then you see some cool shots of like the, the point of view of the vehicle rushing through Mm -hmm. the, the, the funeral setup. And it looks like everybody is dashing out of the way, but the kid is just frozen there stunned. So it kind of, I mean, it kind of makes you think like, yeah, the, the kid would have been hit if Bruce didn't jump in there because he they're, they're, he's driving right for it. But it also happens all at the same time of like Bruce is piecing together. Where's Coulson? He hears the sound of the, you know, the incoming vehicle, but he's also realizing that, hey, that could be the Riddler up there because he's the one that's standing in the middle that's not running away from the sound, mm-hmm. you know, and then he, and he and then he does leave right. later than everybody else. Right but before he, the dive with the kid, yeah. he looks up and he sees. I mean, we assume. I guess it didn't close up, like close up, or cl- get yeah. close on him, a close up shot. But I mean, the but, silhouette, but that's everything matches. It's that's him. Right. Yeah, it's over there. So Bruce was right. Yeah, in the fact of serial killers like to go back and revisit their crimes. Or right, what he'd said um, oversee him or whatever. So he's he's correct. Yeah. Uh, Colson hops out. Um, oh, and the car, ducks. like with well, the car itself too, is this cool, like. DOA, but then DA, you know, mm-hmm. is a, is all over the thing. Like district mm-hmm. attorney, dead on arrival, you know, as a cool like. Um, <laughs> Colson, you're, uh, you're gone. Col- it's like a puzzle, <laughs> puzzle riddlery graffiti. It mat, it yeah. all matches. Colson, you're dead, man. Uh, but yeah. Colson comes out, and then Gordon, of course, says, "Is like, oh my god, it's Colson. This um, some poor woman didn't she didn't get a close up shot. We just heard her audio. He has a bomb on his back." Uh, and and then horrifying the, and then when the beep happens like the entire crowd like screams too yeah um, and I, I thought that was a very good uh like a really well done realistic kind of reaction to mm-hmm. a very like a very plausible bomb threat yeah. kind of situation it wasn't mm-hmm. this like very super comic booky heightened like oh yeah i mean i guess we have similar scenes to kind of compare it to like you've got the the hostage situation with the kids and the terrorist group in Justice League, I guess either version, with where Wonder Woman saves people, and it's very ter- terrifying. But this is kind of a different spin on it, where they do maintain that sense of realism. Like, holy crap! Yeah. Like this car drove into this thing, and, and you're just on edge because you, I mean, and, a thing of holy shit! How I don't believe that this just happened, and yet just like the Dark Knight, uh, when, like then, it's it's like a scenario where um, not just like the Dark Knight, y'all, where everybody <laughs> not just like it, but like it's a similar <laughs> scenario in which there's a tense situation with cops surrounding it because they think something's probably going to happen here and then something does happen colson comes out duct tape which we saw that happen uh two scenes ago except this time no more lies is written again on that Mm -hmm. duct tape which is over his mouth and then uh taped to his chest as an envelope says to the batman uh we cut to exterior of the building nighttime and like i said uh also towards the beginning the left side of that building was in the opening that the the guys were spray painting uh the broke to oh. all that was on that same building so okay. here if you pause it you can see now and yeah it'll match up You're like oh look at the, the spray paint still there yeah it's the same i mean or no <laughs> no i don't think so they cleaned um, it off it's been a day uh but what we can you imagine the, <laughs> Gotham probably has to have the graffiti cleaners in the yeah. city is like, oh, the town's been completely trashed. City okay. government job. Just go and uh, you every know, clean single day this happens. <laughs> yeah. But between th- this cut, though, there is a deleted scene somewhere because we've seen the picture um, of Bruce walking away with the briefcase with a briefcase. Oh. And so there is kind of like a I guess if you need to cut. Because we can just fill in the blanks ourselves as far right. as Bruce left, got out of his car, moved it, and then came back as Batman. Because like, it's been clear. It's easy it's for me to like, fill in the it's blanks. Been, it's been a, a, probably a few hours since yeah. that because they've had to. It's like it's a hostage situation. It's nighttime now. 
everybody's cleared out. Now they've surrounded the whole thing. They've sent in the bomb squad with the little drone trying to figure out like, okay, what's going to happen in here. And then, you know, so now Bruce and he see, and Bruce sees the note to the Batman as Bruce. And so he's got a much like, I don't need an explanation on how Bruce escapes a pit and ends up in Gotham. I don't need an explanation of how he gets out of the building and then comes back in the building. It's all good. Well, yeah, no, I don't need an explanation. No. Um, so the phone's still ringing, which also makes me think of like, holy shit, it's, it's been like what, probably like exactly. an hour or two. Like, an hour this phone, or two. Yeah. I mean, Coles has got to lose his mind just having a phone ringing all this right. time. But I, again, love it. Of Colson raises his head. They send in the little robot, the bomb robot, yeah. and they're like, What's he looking at? And you see him like moving his head around, and then we can hear the Batman's footsteps. coming. The footsteps, footsteps coming again. The and shadows, it's just, like, just like a repeat <gasps> of the first time you see him. Oh yeah. my God, I love Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but walks out of the shadows, um, pulls off the duct tape, in which Colson, kind of like Bill and I said, we like. <sighs> You feel bad for him because he kind of seems like shallow or like you feel pity for him. But then you also because he's kind of a public official, but he's not in over his head and he knows what he's done, but he can't get out of it. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, he's kind of in a you know, he's been in a very compromised position for so long. And in which he even says that and he is apologetic as soon as that's ripped off. And then Batman just pulls the envelope and reads it. And it's, you know, it's another card answer the phone. And so he answers it. And this like. I feel this part like Dano just like he shines here with his voice. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah in yeah. that. And we, we see his little setup and I mean, we've, we saw this in, uh, in the trailers and stuff and how just like, I don't know his voice that he uses. And I know it's with um, his, his a voice adjuster and stuff. And yeah, yeah. And it's just like, it's creepy. And he's now like, I believe to did, reach did, you. Didn't, and, didn't Reeve say that the voice modulator was was in built into the mask and those and that was something that dano was able to do live on set like didn't they I shoot don't this i think didn't reeve say they shot this on set in real time like or at least part of it so they part of it so they See, that have that familiar. back and like, forth i want to i should listen to the commentary i should try yeah. and like listen to the commentary of these two uh yeah. before but i'm yeah that sounds familiar where some of it was like they're both there yeah and, yeah shooting in real time so they could play like off that, of each other yeah which is really cool and it's also and like, i think, I that's think impo- there's a lot of benefits to that and i think that's important too because is this not the first time in the movie that batman and riddler have a real-time interaction even though they're not in the same physical space mm-hmm. aren't isn't this the first time they actually get to talk to each other at the same time yeah yeah okay, yeah and then and then we hear the lines in the, the the exchange that we heard from the first fandom trailer of you're part of this too and Batman, right how am i part of this you let's unmask you. the cesspool like that's yes. kind of a, a following along the train of the dual train of oh it makes sense still when the, when you see the riddler's point of view but in terms of batman he wants to clarify like riddler just says unmask the cesspool and batman's like unmask like clarify unmask. that unmask me i love his voice in this too because it is very um like it's not elevated too much it Mm -hmm. isn't too different from a normal like a normal speech and how it's almost just a little bit rougher and what he's like unmask it's very quick just what it's not like in which i'm not making fun of bales but it's not like totally erupting you know sort of Every feel like that it's time. Yeah. yeah it's just very i don't know it's um i, I think it's cool he's it's trying a cool, different you voice. can see on his on on pattinson's face he's he's being batman but he's trying to hold back his mm-hmm. the tension and anxiety he's clearly feeling during the situation like he's batman this is happening he's got to control this somehow yeah. the best he can yeah and then the the and then I love when Dano just he erupts when Colson's trying yeah. and when Colson's talking and he's like, "You, you hear me?" And then yeah. it's something with that laugh of like a roll. Oh, oh my gosh! Like yeah. that laugh. I'm just like, man, this is this is good shit right yeah. here. Like he's he's creepy, and then like he's funny here because also you know he basically just he breaks down the rules of like three. 
like three and riddles in two minutes. I'll give yeah. you then I'll give me the answers and I'll give you the code to the lock. That's total do Riddler. That is the Riddler. Yeah. Do you understand? And then yeah. Colson starts I even to say that, something. I wrote that down in my notes that this is a classic kind of a Riddler game that's yeah. unwinnable and really kind of a point is it's trying to test whether Batman can keep up with it or not. And that doesn't he say even of a who says it? Is it does Batman say or does Riddler say of like you're dead? Anyways, Colson or like the Riddler so, says, them, okay, that's when he's introducing your dad, because um, this is also where it shows that Riddler streaming this. It's not just mm-hmm. between him yeah. and Batman. He's streaming this and you see Riddler's followers like watching the stream and Riddler introduces it like this is a person that's dead, you know? Yes. And he says that he's going to give him another give him another chance. Nobody gave me a chance. Nobody gave me a chance. And so then, yeah, he says, give me and I'll give you the code of the lock. Colson starts talking and trying to bleed and then boop. Yeah, that, and that got gets me every lap. time. I, yep, same here. Like, I don't know. There's and they miss that in the subtitles. They don't put that in there, but it's so it's funny. Sim- I mean, it's similar like, to Coulson's like the like, Joker. What am I do? Boop, boop. And then it's similar to the Joker in the sense of like you laugh, but it's not. It's like, ah, but it's not. It's that like, uncomfortable. It's not funny, but it's funny. <laughs> of, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then we hear the riddles, which the two of the three riddles we heard, we heard in trailers. Mm-hmm. So for most people that went and saw this, they did not know these riddles. Um, my lady did not know these riddles, you know, or anything, but me, it made me feel smart because I knew the answers because <laughs> I heard them in the trailers. But uh-huh. I mean, just to repeat riddle number one, it can be cruel, poetic or blind, but when it's denied, it's violence. You may find and DC answers- films plan. Yes, obviously. <laughs> Um, <laughs> sorry. And then you know you get Batman, which we all know we've heard of, like justice. The answer is justice. And so then he says justice, and then Riddler gives his explanation, you know, of that. And then Riddle number two: If you are justice, please do not lie. What is the price for your blind eye? Batman quickly. League? I hope not. <laughs> the justice. <Sorry>. A, <laughs> a league of our own. Uh, and then the answer is bribes, in which Batman explains it to him of of you know like bribes. How this much? This is what he cost? wants from you. Yeah. How much were you getting paid? Um, mm-hmm. I mean, the whole point is you're seeing now where there's like, he's trying to get him. I'm live streaming you. You need to confess what is really going mm-hmm. on, trying to uncover which connects to the murders that have happened up to this mm-hmm. point. So you can see if everything's building on each other. Yeah. Everything is connected. It's not just a funny game of riddles, but it's also got a point, a larger yes. point to it. There's yes. a point to it. And it connects to everything that's been, that's happened up to this, up to right. this, uh, scene right. and then like this is the part as, as colson's like freaking out or whatever and then you know riddler says that don't lose your head mr colson yeah and then i mean again it's just the way that he says all of this and then there's like last riddle you know stuff it's just mm-hmm. man dano is so good and which number three is since you're just and this one was not in any trailers or anything so since your justice is so select please tell us which vermin you're paid to protect in which batman says the rat he wants to know the rat and that's where colson is just like nope i am not telling nope. that one He's not like, happening you can kill me but people i have family and friends people i care about and he, yeah. he, he, I feel like he loses his shit at that point too. And he's right. like, this is so much bigger than you could ever imagine. It's the yeah, whole system. It's the whole system. Mm-hmm. And this, in the going back, I think it's done so well with Reeves in both, I mean, in the acting, in the writing, in the directing, and then in the, in the mm-hmm. editing of like, you're mm-hmm. feeling the tension as shit is just cutting back and forth between yeah. those two and then the Riddler yeah. and stuff. And you can and you see hear the, the time uh, tick down on the collar too. Uh-huh. And you, yeah. you can kind of start to hear that. And then Riddler doesn't help as Coulson's freaking out and him and Batman are going back and forth. And there is like this panic. And then he's like, five, four. And he's counting and he's yeah. doing all of that. And then, yeah. Um, like, I don't know if he says... Can, goodbye or something okay yeah i didn't know if he says die bye or what and he's like one because he doesn't say zero or he doesn't say zero it, yeah. you know it is like a bye or something like that and mm-hmm. then bomb goes off you know colson you <laughs> that batman, would be a good riddler callback yeah <laughs> batman flies back this is also i mean we saw like just a fraction of that in that like, the, in trailers because it's yeah. you know it's the flashy action yeah or whatever it's batman I mean, this, in an explosion so this was the first action actiony scene of the movie right i We've mean got the, the batman vehicle beating crashing up at the beginning I mean, it, but I'm, I'm trying to think of like action scene. scenes like i did 
I know this sounds like nitpicking. It's an action like, those moment. Are fight scenes. This is an action scene. I feel. Well, um, would an action scene be a fight scene? I don't know. It's just like a. I don't know. And I know it's just like getting nitpicky, but I really just thought like, oh, this is moment. the first like actiony something um in the movie Suspe- not a complaint it's, very, at all, it's just more like suspense it's suspense it's intention because it's suspense intention because you've got things like the car running through the crowd of people and the explosion mm-hmm. and stuff like that i feel like it plays it up more for that i mean it's it's very it's it's not the conventional kind of thing that you see in comic book movies a lot like the whole movie mm-hmm. has this very like and I, that's one of the good reason why, uh to do these this whole series of chapter by chapter because a lot of these chapters feel like their own little stories i think mm-hmm. this specific scene maybe more than any scene in the movie you could rip this out and show it to somebody that hasn't seen the movie and it kind of plays out it's got a beginning middle and end to it you could have That's shown this point you could have shown this whole scene like a like a prologue like the yeah. way the dark knight is you could have shown this like an imax before um a movie another imax movie and it's because it's it doesn't give too much away if you just watched it other than, you know, Colson dies. But um, it raises lots of questions and it's it's got a, a lot of narrative and a lot too of many questions, a lot of it's got too Batman, and Riddler. There's a lot that goes on in this scene. I, I like that. That's a good point of this could have been like a, a promotional like scene. A tease. Yeah. Yeah. A tease or something like that. But I mean, Batman gets his world rocked um, in which. uh you know, we get the ringing in the ears and we see as he's like fading and we see the police are then rushing in and coming toward him. And then it cuts to black and that's the end of yeah. the scene. Yeah. And it shows like this, the sound goes out. Uh, and that's, and I do remember that, like there were those really good, there were like two Dolby um, podcast video things. One was for audio with Atmos and one was oh, for yeah. video and HDR. And I think in the audio, when he talks about this, Reeves talks about this scene where, that's meant to be Bruce's and Batman's like audio as mm-hmm. he's knocked out and you hear the ringing in the ears and everything. Understandable. Like you know, yeah. he just had a bomb go off in his face. And exactly. so your ears like, probably this is, ringing a little bit. This is bit. Batman at one of his most vulnerable moments. He's just, and I'm out. sure there's, there's nitpicks of like, he'd have damage, but I mean, you see him as he flies back oh, and on. his arms are up. So it's like, I don't know. Also, I don't give a shit. What is like, I don't want Batman's face to be burned off the rest of the movie. So it's like, it's fine. right. Um, well, why didn't, yeah, I'm okay. I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. No, no, no. I, I, I'll okay. just leave it there. I'll just leave yeah, it. Okay. There. Why didn't? There's you other movies where blanks. Batman drives a Batmobile <laughs> through flames and nothing happens. I mean, he, that one has goggles on, but whatever. Yeah, it's a, it's whatever. Uh, I think so. Yeah, the scene as a whole, um, we'd seen most of it. Oh, and I think because of a trailer and there being an explosion, like in the trailers and stuff, it's like. And also just the vibe of it. You just, you felt like, and not just because it's what the Riddler wants, but also this character, this Colson guy. I mean, when he comes, when he comes out of that vehicle and he's got that around his, you're like, he's dead. He's a goner. So mm-hmm. it's like, what, what is this scene going to reveal? Mm-hmm. Like what's is this aside the, from him just dying? Right. Because yeah, some of the other, um, riddler victims you've seen their fates off screen or shown to yeah. you after the the riddle gauntlet has happened and this one is very interactive in terms of the movie showing it showing you the whole yeah. process and you know somewhere in gotham there's a uh there's a guy named harvey dent that's like hey there's an opening, opening. <laughs> there's yeah. an opening somebody needs to defend uh, it's a hot gotham shot he's probably here. some hot shot uh two-faced yeah. hot shot that's coming in from a another city in the next yeah. movie or something my goodness uh so yeah what what else what else do you have to say about the scene um that we didn't touch on i mean i just i mean they go by through every basically every little moment yeah i feel like it is probably an underrated scene in the movie and but just because it really highlights paul dano's riddler it's his first major moment in the movie where he gets to interact with batman and really show his riddler persona to the yeah. masses on the live stream and being like look i've got batman into this look at me we're being successful here and and he would probably, you say he's a the, fan of batman's at this point he's a fan of batman's the whole time that's why he's doing the whole everything yeah batman mm-hmm. inspired him um i take riddler at face value for that it only changes at the end when he realizes yeah. that batman doesn't feel the same way um and think about this too when he they didn't the movie didn't show this 
it would have been a really interesting thing if they did. So Matt Reeves, I know you're listening. So the uh, when Riddler live streams this, I would think that he's able to show the other side of the stream and like watch and show Batman and show Batman's reactions through this mm. thing. So if he's live streaming it and it goes on the news later, the, like the public is seeing firsthand live accounts of the Batman operating. Yeah. That would have been interesting to show like other people's houses and like kids or things like, look at this news report. Oh my God, it's the Batman. He's it's vengeance. It's vengeance. <laughs> oh my God, it's vengeance. vengeance. Should have uh, cut to the penguin, you know, yeah. eating popcorn and being like, oh, <laughs> I'm a proprietor. A pro proprietor. Or a show of the penguin like wearing his uh, Riddler follower mask. Yeah. yeah. It could be the Riddler. <laughs> Riddler. He's Riddler. Playing, he's- He's playing dress up in his uh, in his office at the at the lounge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that the the scene is great. I think Dano definitely is the star here. Um, yeah. But I mean, the way he says like, "I'm a kid. I've always loved little puzzles." I love the ways of so puzzles. You, you got to think too. If he's there at the the scene, he's walking home, making that phone call, knowing that Batman's not answering for a while. Right, because if he's there at the funeral when Coulson comes crashing in, he's standing up looking over oh, it, and then he's walking, and then he's right, walking that's a good, out. That's a it's good. Not, it's not uh, like he's at home all the time because we saw that's it. like right. he's there. But he's got to right. get home in Gotham. And I lived in yeah, a big city, like and happens, not getting far can take a while. What would have happened if they would have answered the call right away? I'm not ready. Uh, Beep. Yeah, I'm not ready. <laughs> but uh, but that's probably chalked up to Riddler anticipating this, the what what's going to play out um, ahead of time. You know, it could have cut to the phone that it cuts to could have been Riddler's like the little setup he has in his apartment with the, just the chair and the question mark. And it probably would have been blank, empty yeah. until he shows up later. Yeah, that's my, <laughs> that's my... In, as he's pulling the mask down, he's like, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready. You've been trying. I've been trying to reach you, but you, you know, I'm, I'm not yet. Uh, Batman, you're fast, but yeah, great chapter. It's the Paul Dano show. Um, love this interaction with that he that Riddler has with with Batman. Uh, escalates everything. Mm-hmm. Um, makes Riddler Escalation. more of a more of a threat, and it ends with a. I mean, as it cuts to black, it's like shit. The police are coming. Uh, Batman has got him out. Uh, what are they going to do with Batman? He, how responsible is he for what just happened? <laughs> they interfered gonna... with the police investigation. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, the chief. I mean, you get that vibe of the chief as he's like, "Gordon, what you really doing?" You know, and stuff. It's like, oh, okay, he doesn't. He's not a Batman fan. Right. So, um, I mean, you've seen the movie. You know what happens next, but you'll have to stick stick around for the next uh, chapter by chapter to yeah. break that down. In which the music of that one is probably my favorite track title um escaped oh. crusader it's yes i mean you know and his jacino and his puns yes. he had a he had a good time naming all these and uh Lord bless him. and which i think this one is definitely uh yeah, i mean this one was fun too uh funeral and far between mm-hmm. collar yes that's id oh ID. man he's good at this yeah, he did. He did pretty good. Um, yeah, so few neural and far between and collar ID. I think collar ID was this one, but maybe a little bit of the last track was in this mm-hmm. scene. But I don't think so. So mm-hmm. um, that'll wrap it up for this chapter by chapter, Haas. Look at that. I mean, can you believe that we talked like that? See, you said that like man, you guys talk like an hour for just a scene. It's like yeah, it's actually pretty simple. I mean, it's yeah. pretty easy. It's, we're at forty two minutes. Yeah, uh, right now so <laughs> yeah 10 minutes because i looked at the time because i'm like okay this is a 10 minute scene how much how long could you possibly talk about it but yeah being Very batman fans simple. as we are it should have been obvious that yeah we it's a lot of fun talk about anything for a long time so thanks for um i guess you know you're kind of sitting in for me and i was sitting in for yeah. bill here so yeah. thanks for coming aboard talking about that man <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you uh go ahead and, and plug away anything you want to you want to plug uh, just follow me on Twitter at SMB underscore Ryan and <laughs> follow the, the Batman podcast network that has all these lovely shows that we like to frolic about in our free time at Batman yeah. network. And uh, man, yeah, straight out of Gotham. The last BOF podcast. Both yes. Of us were 200. On. Yeah. 
That was a fun discussion. Hubba, 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 money, 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 episode <laughs> 200. Yeah, that's a good one. If y'all haven't listened to that, listen to it. If you haven't, if you already have listened to it, listen to it again. Maybe your, it again. your rankings that's... have changed. There's lots of good, that's an evergreen episode if there ever was one. For so sure. That's a, that's a great one. You and I got to be on with uh, the um, lovely host, Garrett Grev, and then Mr. Boudam Pockets himself, Peter Vera. <laughs> um, yeah, and we talked for two hours on <laughs> Batman films, live action. Just to Batman clarify, films, so check it that's, out. You said Boudin pockets because Pete did transport Boudin in his sure pocket, in his pockets. It will be fifty March. years from now, and I will remember if I'm still alive. Of like, man, I remember when Peter Vera put Boudin sausage <laughs> in his pockets, <laughs> and, <laughs> transported and like, them we're tr- half hour away. <laughs> we're riding home, and we're just like, you still have Boudin? Where are you keeping it? I don't know. 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 I don't Peter Rivera, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Check out his Little Caesar uh, pizza video on BLF. Oh, it's um, so good. As for me, you can check out my reviews, uh, interviews, and posts on BLF proper. Um, I'm reviewing right now the Batman title from Chip Zdarsky and Jorge Jimenez, as well as Sean Murphy's White Beyond the White Knight, in which um, the intermission, the Red Hood, um, story that first issue just came out recently so check that out on batman of film and then also check out my podcast the batman book club uh you can follow that on twitter at the batman bc for latest episode drops and upcoming episodes and also listen wherever you listen to podcasts bill also is very generous and he posts all of those on blf proper so main thing go to blf proper yep. so for mr Haas, i guess i'm mr lauer and i think announcer rachel is going to take us out Thanks for listening to the BOF Social Hour, Jet's official vlog and podcast on Batman on Film. Follow Jet on Twitter, at Batman on Film. Follow the BOF newsfeed on Twitter, at the Batman on Film. For Jet and everyone at BOF, I'm announcer Rachel. Authoritative, definitive, the original. Batman on Film, established in 1998.